Ghost, Aliens, and Beyond. Hello everybody and welcome back to Ghost Aliens and Beyond and I'm not going to lie, Simon, I nearly said round football. Oh, so it's your turn to cock up this time. Yeah, but I didn't and they all are a part of the epic shows on YouTube, so check yeah. everything out on there and we'll give a plug to a few of them at the end. Here he is, our new mascot, this is the epic bully. I didn't come up with that name, guys, by the way. I didn't. He did. I this don't guy, like that guy. Depends this on which side he's on. This is the bully of the world. <laughs> Otherwise known as social media or Facebook. But I'm not going to get into that. It's the notification everyone's getting today. Mm. Mm -hmm. Zip. Yeah, be quiet. So, mate, um, everybody, welcome back. Um, we do have a guest later on. That will be me with uh, Donna Lane Cameron from the USA. But right now, me and Simon have got two subjects to talk about we're going to talk about what if we lived on a super earth and then we're going to go into the epic men in black yeah so hit me with your rhythm stick right now i've been professional everybody so if you see my eyes gone down i've actually wrote stuff for once what's simon knows is very remarkable for me yeah take notes people it's the first time he's ever done it yeah, but then the problem is, it's not just a normal podcast anymore, so things, you know, people are going to see me looking down if they're watching it on YouTube. That's it, guys, by the way. I'm going to say it one more time. This is also on YouTube now. Go and look for Epic Shows on YouTube, and it's going to be on there. Go stay yeah. beyond round yeah, football I mean, and yeah, the most amazing, the Epic Florida podcast. Yes. So... Do you know anything about Super Earths, mate? Uh, I knew a little bit, um, but then you uh, posed the question, what if we lived on a Super Earth? You sent me a couple of videos. Uh, unfortunately, it was a bit boring, so I did my own little bit of research. <laughs> and it's, it's quite interesting. Um, the concept of living on a Super Earth is, like, if you've watched some of the videos, is possible. But in reality, it will never happen unless you have years and years and years of evol uh, evolution. Well, if people so, are wondering what a super Earth is, it's a planet more mass than Earth, but less than larger planets like Neptune, for example. Well, yes and no, because that's the thing. They've got the planet with the eco planets now and super Earth. Super Earths are just a planet that is inhabitable potentially by people like you said but with a greater mass it doesn't necessarily be 10 times it can be two, twice the size of earth but it's not about the size of it it's about how heavy it technically is so a earth that is twice the size of us would potentially weigh you think would weigh twice as much but because of all the sizes and it ends up being nearly 10 times Yes, and obviously the big problem is as well is the increased gravity, what brings a lot of problems like um, water um, covered in deep oceans. It, the, you have an ice base at the bottom, what yeah. then stops the heat and then stops, um, I believe it's, um, you know, let's see if we can start like life on the planet. So the temperatures... Well, you te 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 technically, yes, because we, if you go and look at evolu evolution, we came from... Uh, through science and we came from the sea we evolved from plankton. we evolved into small animals into small fish and then evolved into mammals and then moved into land mammals and dinosaurs and blah 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 that's how we understand earth as in starting life but on a different planet that's not the same ecosystem that we've got technically life could start another way this is why I'm, it's off my personal research, not what they, they say on these particular videos that you've shown me. 
they do say if we represent Earth as in what it is now, and go away, Siri, if we represent Earth as a bigger form, we would have to abide by our rules that we've got on Earth. But if you go to a different planet, the rules may not be the same. I know science is saying yes, it will, but there's also the it's all theory because it's all it's never going to happen, especially not in our lifetime, anyway. But we're talking hundreds of years before we even think about changing. We're, 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 we're not we're not even going to be going to we're potentially going to Mars this decade, but. Are we? With what's with the science science base we've got? Yeah. Are we actually going to get people on on Mars this, in this decade? I don't think this decade. Maybe next decade. I think the biggest problem we've got with a super Earth as well is um more mass means more gravity. Obviously, a short yeah. jog, people, for example, would feel like a marathon. Um, also, it's going to be stress on your muscles, your organs, and your bones. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stop you on that, but that is where our bodies will be able to adapt. We would become, technically become superhuman. Our oh, bodies have adapted to so happen, many different things. That would happen straight away. So the first It wouldn't happen straight away, but if you, example, if you were a weight trainer and you learned to carry 50 kilos of weight on your shoulders, your body would adapt to that 50 kilos of weight all the time. It's the same principle. You go yeah, to I a heavy exactly. earth. But we're talking, you're probably talking hundreds of years for the human body to change. Oh, and human point, evolution, because... yeah. Evolution would have to be to, for it to work. But for you to actually physically survive, your body would adapt. We well, are, the, the human the, the human body is a miracle, really. Yeah, but the problems they said we would have is like, because it would inc- the um, gravity would increase by, like, say, the factor of 10, um, organs would shift. What would give us health yeah. issues at first, what is on the problem, and obviously... Air we breathe would feel would feel heavier on a super earth, so we'd have to be a lot more lazy basically at first. And as you say, we'd have to yeah. train the bodies to work to get used to it. Yeah, but we'd all end up be being the world's strongest man or men, women. Yeah, if we can't, the earth, we'd yeah. all have to be the strongest people in the, in the world just to survive on that planet. But it just shows the resilience of the human body, the body would be able to adapt to it. And obviously, another problem is um, if you want to cook pasta or something, guys. Um, apparently, on a super world, it would take longer to boil air, boil water, and it would also take longer to freeze water. I'm not sure yeah. how, or why, but it's the, uh, the, uh, it's the uh, 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 the uh, astromatic. No, wait, I can't even say the word. It's the pressure, in other words. So, if you go up to Mount Everest, it takes longer to heat up water and takes more energy to heat up water when you go up to the earth because the earth is it's it's a, a, it's uh what is it the, the earth is thinner but the pressure is bigger is it see that you do my headed i can't turn it off um <laughs> the pressure it's the pressure it's like underwater as you, you know if you, if you jump under the water under the sea under into what your ears pop it's the pressure you should it's your body the heat it's, it's, I'm getting myself confused. Right. I'll tell you what, though, the, we do have other problems as well. So it, it, this co- may not happen, but it could happen. The um, inner core liquid iron may also go solid, but basically means it's not going to move. What means we'd get no, um, what's that, mag- magnetic shield around the Earth? Um, Potentially, what, but that's if you're looking at a particular, depends on which yes, super Earth you're I'm looking saying, at. But I'm trying to say, all the four, what, could, what could be a problem? What what would mean? Yeah, we're talking on which other one. <laughs> That's because I'm trying to get to the point that you're uh, buying in. <laughs> so the problem is if it does, if the magnetic field doesn't move, the problem we'd have is um more radiation exposure. Chance, um, the chance of cancers obviously increases for human beings. Um, and another problem with stronger gravity, um, it's going to attract more meteors and things like that. Yeah. But uh, what was it? The Jupiter got hit by a 500 mile wide asteroid and it didn't even touch it. <laughs> it didn't even make a dent in it. Well, I suppose it really depends where it lands, isn't it? Yeah, it all depends on where it lands. Well, if it lands in the sea, you get a possibly a tidal wave. If, you, if it, it's any form of matter, i.e. solid earth, lava, or anything like that, it will cause a massive, massive particle cloud, which so, technically wipes out the dinosaurs. 
Yeah, that's true. So what I think would be if we did find a super earth and we sent some there to check it out and everything. Yep. In, in the gravity now, I think we would just have to put humans into a sort of space where we could increase the gravity now and as you say start teaching well i want I, i'd say the opposite i won't put us in places to increase the gravity what i would do is create to put us into a slight vacuum because in a vacuum you're weightless slowly but surely increase the pressure in the vacuum will make you equal over time to the pressure that's outside and eventually you would be able to possibly walk on that other earth it would take thousands and thousands of years of evolution and this pressure chamber to actually evolve someone so someone could actually walk on that planet with unaided but the other option is uh mechanical devices yes. which sound sound scientific uh, sorry, science fiction but then things are using avatar the robots who are using avatar and alien they would be perfect for moving about on an, on an area that has got a massive gravity pull. The other thing with these super planets that I think of, um, there could be life there already, just because we would suffer. Uh, if, as you said, if they've started there, th they could look totally different from us. Yeah. Uh, the way they're formed and everything, so they handle the gravity and things, and the air. Yeah. And the other theory is that there may be life on that planet that is more evolved and, than us, but they can't leave. Yes. Because thinking about the size of the planet and the amount of energy that's needed to get off the planet, to put it into perspective, I've done it for up-to-date firms because that video was a bit out of date. Uh, <laughs> so if you were to leave the planet Earth now on the Falcon, on the uh, SpaceX Falcon Heavy, it can carry around about 50,000 kilograms of payload. To move that payload... It wouldn't do it on a super earth it would be able to move round about 40 kilograms with the same rocket and fuel yeah so you're talking from going from 500 kilogram five fifty thousand kilograms to moving a german shepherd <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. literally you're going from moving like ma massive amount of weight to moving something that's 40 kilo because of the amount of energy that's needed to leave the gravitational pull so technically our our, our, our technology could do it but it just wouldn't be able to push the payload so you won't be able to move anything so it would be technically pointless that's very true so yeah let's face it the human race if anybody's thinking about going to these planets there's going to be so oh. many problems it's just yeah forget Not it yet. guys I, I think I even think Mars is too far right now I think we're better off colonising <sighs> the moon right now uh, well, the problem is with the moon, you go from minus 200 degrees to plus 100 degrees in a space of six hours. Time to live inside of it. Like <laughs> unless, people and unless you, is it, it, what's it called? Luther? Luther from uh, Umbrella Academy, who lived on the moon for... Oh, yes. Years. Big, oh, I'm good, <laughs> I've just been watching that, guys. That's why it's, in my, it's fresh in my head. I'm a bit behind, I understand. I'm sorry, but... Yeah. <laughs> don't worry i've noticed people started to watch cobra kai now so and yeah I've that's me as well <laughs> i've been watching them for years people i, I don't going. i don't i don't watch netflix that much to be honest <laughs> okay so i think we really without being too over the top scientific what i think a lot of people listening here don't really want to hear we should move on to the second subject what i think more people will be interested in men in black it's the men in it's the men in, it's the men in. The men in black. Done. People can't see this. I'm shaking my head. Well, go on. oh yeah, we're gonna. You, right. Well, this is this is this is this is your this is your thing. You are, I haven't got a clue what you're on about with this. Right, so men in black. I'm gonna give everybody apparently what is the very first first encounter of a men in black story. Now I'm gonna be reading this, and I have cut and shorten it down a lot because this story goes on for about 20 minutes and no one wants to hear me reading something for 20 minutes so hopefully i've shortened it down to about a few minutes because i'll okay. make the notes i'll time you okay you can time as you want because we're One, about to stop two three go <laughs> okay it's called a man his boy and a dog on a boat 
Now, this is in Monterey Islands, I believe, um, June 21st, 1947. If I've said the island place wrong, I do apologise, but that's in America somewhere. Yeah. Monterey or something like that. Anyway, um, Harold Dold, I believe his name was, was with his son and his dog out on the boat at the time and left the harbour. And he saw six donut shaped objects above his boat. Obviously, at that time, no one really believed in, well, no, there wasn't even a name UFO back then. So um, he, he's looking up on it, and one donut shaped one spiraled out of the sky towards his boat. Clearly, they're all panicking. While trying to take a photo, though, like he had a camera on it, I'm not sure why he had a camera, but he noticed something else coming out of the sky, what was a strange lava like liquid. Um, what fell and hit the boat like some sort of metal wood is the word they've used for it. Um, Howard's arm was badly hurt in the incident, but he was, he, thank God, he was able to protect his son. But unfortunately, people and dog lovers, I hate to say this, the dog did not survive. So, I oh. mean, don't try and smile and hide your face. <laughs> I didn't. I was sorry. Evil man. <laughs> Tweet him, everybody. <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so he rushes um, back to the harbour to tell his supervisor. Um, Fred Christmas, the supervisor, um, he tells him about the counter, obviously. Um, well, Freddy, Freddy boy, I'm going to call him, don't believe what Harold's telling him as he doesn't believe in, you know, the paranoia, normal stuff and aliens. But being a good supervisor, Fred says he will go out and check the area, you know, you know, just to prove him wrong, probably. He wasn't going out there expecting to see anything. He was doing it more of a, like a good supervisor friend. He tells Harold, obviously, to go home and look after his family. Um, clearly with a dog dead. There's a lot of upset feelings at that point, I'm guessing. So Fred goes out on, a, on his own on a boat and to have a look around. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Fred also sees a strange donut object in the sky. So God knows how much time there's been between it, but it's still there. So he returns to the harbour and he don't want to tell he doesn't want to tell Harold what he saw as he, yeah as he's you know he's skeptic it's hard for him to believe in what he sees so he's trying to think in his head basically what it could be yeah um well Harold's home with his family at this time and he tells his wife about it clearly they're both upset and the wife basically because about the dog obviously um the wife says um we should sleep on it and talk about it tomorrow right so they've got obviously had their chat but. Harold still can't get it out of his head. So the next day, Harold's out for a walk when a man in a black suit approaches him. Um, the man in the black suit looks at Harold very seriously and says, we need to talk. Um, we need to talk about basically what you saw yesterday. So Harold, you know, a bit scared and uh, 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 back at the jars on it, I suppose, agrees to have this chat. So um, Harold and this gentleman went to a diner. Um, they start with pleasant chat, you know, you know, general stuff about life and that. Then the man in black says, I know what you saw yesterday. Then goes to explain it in very great detail. How did this man know about it? He didn't even tell Fred everything because, you know, at the time his head was all over the place. He just to told Fred little bits. The interesting part here is the man in black didn't explain how he knows what he knows, but explains he knows much more about it. And then even Harold knew. Um, the man in black leans into Harold and says really menacingly, um, you never speak about this to anyone or bad things will happen to you and your family. I thought he was uh, going to say, you don't talk about it. I'm going to buy you a piece of pie. <laughs> he might have already done that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just pie. That, at that point, you get that you know, reference, you're awesome. Yeah. And the men in black at that point does scar up and leave, basically. Harold was absolutely scared to the point he decided never to talk about it to anyone. Well, then he sees Fred. Fred talks to Harold and tells him he saw the um, donut object in the sky and says, we'll have to, we're going to have to tell the press about that. But Harold can't forget what the man in black said to him and says, I can't say anything. All things will happen to my family. Somehow, though, Fred persuades him to tell the press. So I'm not sure how that conversation went, but, you know, he decided to tell the press anyway at that point. So Howard and Fred reach out to a Chicago magazine 
to um, tell their story. That's what it gets me. Sending your story, I always, you know, a bit iffy. If it's real, do I need mm. money for it? Um, the editor of the magazine was curious and he wanted to verify the story first. The editor reached out to a man who was a pilot who saw a UFO two days earlier, um, late after, I should say, Fred and Harold. His name was Kenneth Arnold. Um, Kenneth, Kenneth verified and agreed um, agreed to meet him, basically saying, yep, this is what happened, mate, I'll meet you too. Um, himself and two army people went and meet Fred and Harold to check out the story. They're, they're having secret meetings all the time about this now, uh, exchanging stories of things that have happened between all of them. Um, one meeting, Harold shows them the fragment. He has a bit of the lava left, apparently. Um, so, you know, the army guys say, yeah, we're at that. Um, at that point, the two army guys have to leave and they're going to take it back to, you know, check into it and see what this lava bit is. Yeah. This is where it gets really creepy. They get on their plane. There's four people on the plane. The two army men die with a lava bit. The other two men, mysteriously, only two with parachutes and get off the plane. So the two army men with the lava has been lost. At that point, um, Harold remembers what the man in black said to him again, and him and Fred then start denying it that they made. They start saying they made the story up. You know, obviously scared. Yeah. The worry things are happening. So nothing's really said after that. Um, but until about 1956, I'm guessing, where the idea of Men in Black was released to the world, I all thought got their story with other stories. And this is where the term in 1956, MIB, Men in Black, were born. So that was the first ever story about it. So what's your thoughts on Men in Black? Uh, well, if it is true, would we never know, would we actually ever know? Because so many black. Well, um, if there was a secret organisation out there, there would be at least some form of evidence. There's always a trail for something. Don't care what what it is. All, everything always leaves a trail, uh, and there's no trail. You say there's no trail, but there is so many different types of stories out there. With every story, there's, there's always yeah, exactly what they all exactly what they all are stories. It's not fact. It's not actual hard physical evidence of. And do you really think if there was a secret, unless it is double bluffing people, do you really think if there was a Men in Black, they would allow you to make what, three films? Wait, 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 yes, because. Show the, a double show bluff? The proof, yeah. Show the proof to oh. make people off. But the question oh. is, do you believe in aliens? I believe we're not alone in this what in this uh, in this universe, yeah. So, but there's no proof. Yeah. See, so it's... many fact, there is a way. You know, there's always ways, especially these governments, they're tricky as anything these days. Personally, in my opinion, don't trust anything they say. What they say yeah, and what whatever they say is look look the other way and see what they're doing. Mm. But, um, yeah, so many, but there's a few theories out there. They're, they're obviously humans who are working for the world governments to keep everything secret from us. Or they're actually yeah, aliens so. themselves, either working alone or they're working with the world governments. Yeah, they could be. They could be. We, we shall never know. Life is a mystery. Um, well, we will know because I'm going to say on here I've seen an alien. It may be true, maybe not. But if you men in black, um, you'll find me. <laughs> bye bye, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> if we disappear, people, Simon will be taken over every show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Is good man>? <laughs> <laughs> so you're not in the camp of necessarily believing in the MIBs right now. <sighs> I I would say there would be more conspiracies behind it than what there actually is out there if it was because well, if anybody's got any conspiracies out there what you think would blow my mind simon's mind email them to me at ghost aliens and beyond at gmail.com because we'd love to know yeah, yeah listen, I'm a, I'm, i look at the science side of things um Scientifically, there's no way of proving that there's nothing out there in the in the galaxy that we're not alone. But there's also no scientific proof that men in black don't exist. So, I look at my opinion, and at the moment, if it was a massive secret organisation, 
uh, there's a certain somebody in the White House that will probably uh, blow the lid on that before he leaves, if there was, because he is that kind, that kind of stupid. <laughs> That's not stupid, mate. I'm, if he does everything wrong, but if he finally tells the world that there's aliens out there, my God, I would be the happiest guy alive. Well, but three days after this, there's supposedly a, a, a secret email being released. When you say three days after this, would you like to tell people the date you mean? Because obviously they this is some different dates. Yeah, they? sorry. Yeah, if you, if you, if this is usually should be released on the sixth of this month. Usually, always the sixth of every yeah. month. Yep. So you, that, I mean, there, there's just a conspiracy theory out there that something's going to be released on the 9th of September. Uh, that's going to blow the world's mind. Well, there's two theories on that. It's either going to be the aliens and that, or it's going to be that paedophile ring, unfortunately. Yeah. So it's either something's going to be massively released, we will give you all the news in next, next month's show. Or maybe it's even something better. Or we might not even be here by it's next month's show. It's not the email. <laughs> it is the return of Ram football. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that is, uh, that is coming back, isn't it? Very soon, uh, people. If you don't know what football is, yet again, it's a YouTube Go. soccer football show where off. many of us predict Premier League scores, and most of them get very wrong badly. Um, there's going to be loads of us on it this year, so there's going to be well, there's going to be some strange ways. How are you looking? There's going to be some characters on the show. Is a nice way of putting it. Sorry, I missed all that. Sue was playing up on me. Uh, yeah, that's okay, so about, that wasn't for you, about, everyone else. So don't worry about it. Oh, but about, about football. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun. And it's like definitely. you said, so there's going to be some. You. Yeah. You know, I was like dropping things on you. Is there anything on this show you'd like to, you know, on an, another episode talk about? Um, nothing comes to my mind at the moment, uh, but I will get back to you on it. And I'm just, my, my yeah, mind is it's blown just, at the moment. If there's people out there who's listening or watching, yet again, send us a tweet at GAAB podcast. Yes, I've changed the Twitter handle finally. Um, just tweet us and it should be on screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the one. Just tweet us if you've got an idea of anything you'd like us to talk about or get into ghost, alien, supernatural, religion, anything like that. Um, you know, just tweet it to us and we'll, we'll get into it. You know, it's something. And yet again, if you want to come on the show, if you've got any supernatural stories, please, please, please come on. Yeah. It doesn't Spooky have to stories. Be yeah. It doesn't have to be your own one. Friends, families, work colleagues, I don't care who it is. If you've got one, come on and tell us it. Well, I'll give you a sneak peek. If things don't go ahead, I could think they're going to go ahead next week, I may have some spooky stories for next month. Ooh, people. Now, that's not a that's reason for you to come. That's a teaser. Episode. Now, obviously, I will tweet what next month's episode will be about. I'm going to look for a few ideas. Um, eventually, we will... Oh, I know what I'm going to do next month's about, mate. October's. We were going to talk about the most scary places where you live and the most scary places down south, wasn't I? We're going to look them up. Yes. The most haunted places. Yeah. So, as it's called, got to, there's, there's two. There's two within a mile and a half of me, so I know I know about the ones. Unfortunately, people, the town I'm from, there's not really much here, so I'm going to have to go outwards. No, I should talk about dead airplanes. Oh, dear, don't say that about Gatwick, mate. We're a mess. <laughs> <laughs> well I've got if a 16th anybody century anybody who works I'm... at Gatwick who's off work I feel for you right now I'm not going to lie yeah yeah hopefully hopefully this government pulls its finger out of his ass by the way I know this uh, isn't I know this isn't anything to do with ghosts and that but talking to Norwegian Airlines it sounds like international travel now this is not guaranteed so I just talked to a random staff member um, in the same building as me that international travel to Orlando still may be going ahead from Gatwick next year. Well, see what happens, see what the future brings. Um, but people, we don't want to talk about stuff like that. You was here to be scared and that. So, Simon, that's pretty much what we're going to talk about. We are in a minute going to go into the interview with Donna, who has about three or four spooky stories. So, guys, check that out. Um, Simon, I would just like you to, at this moment, um advertise your podcast yeah uh we've got the epic flow of the podcast 
which myself and Phil do. It's all about Florida. Uh, you can find us at TEF Pod on all socials. TEF Pod at gmail.com if you need to email in. And I do a, well, sort of do every so often, a podcast about my life, which I've not done anything since May. So, well, you can understand it in the situation we've been in, in the last few months. But it's uh, Simon Says Pod. Uh, it's usually like a, it's usually a, a, a story, my, well, what's happening going on in my life, but it's not really much happening recently, so I haven't done anything. So, but I'm concentrating more on this and the Epic Port Florida podcast and around football, because I'll be on there as well. So, around football, there's going to be so many people on it. <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. I, just need to, I just need to make sure I'm not a lobster man again. Well, yes. We've got to figure that if out. Do that, if, I do, if I do that, I'm all right. It's weird. Mm, maybe not <laughs> <laughs> but yep yeah, obviously guys as you know he's advertised them I'm going to advertise Rant Football what is on Twitter at Rant Football 1 I believe I can't remember the email for it right now but if you watch Rant Football it will all be on there anyway um, also you've got this show um, yeah Ghost Aliens Beyond we've got the email is Ghost Aliens and Beyond at gmail.com and also Twitter and Instagram we are G-A-A-B podcast so Gab podcast but if you want to listen do me a favour as he changes his background could yeah. you if you've listened to this episode could you do hashtag G-A-A-B and tell me where you're listening what country and <laughs> you know just it'd just be interesting to see where my listeners are coming from for this show Yes. So, as I said, just hashtag G A A B. So, Gab, nice and simple. So, Simon, yeah, again, thank you for being the co host again of this spooky show. Well, thank you for having me back on here. And to let people know, our next guest is actually a podcaster herself who is from Mickey's and Waffles podcast. I'm not giving any names out yet because there's two people on there, but I want to surprise you with who it's going to be. Uh, it's a waffle. It's definitely a waffle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I am waffling on myself right now. Yeah. So everybody, from me and Simon, goodbye. And straight after we've gone, and there probably is going to be an ad somewhere, you're going to have Donna with her spooky story. So see you all soon. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs>
All right, so everyone, if you listen last month, um, Donna does know Paul, and Paul doesn't believe in ghosts. Well, we're swapping it this time. Donna does believe, and Donna's got stories. So, Donna, would you like to get into your first story for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, this one happened. It's a personal story. It is about my grandfather who passed away in 1987, July 5th of 87. Um, I was about six months pregnant when it happened. He lived in Boulder City, Nevada, and I was living at Las, in Las Vegas at the time. Well, actually, Henderson, Nevada. Um, it was a routine of mine at the time to go over to see Grandpa every Sunday to make sure that he was taken care of. I would bring, you know, his laundry, do his laundry for him, make him a meal, visit with him. He lived alone. Grandma had passed away back in 1981. Um, so, you know, just make sure that he was doing good. As I pulled up, I always called him before I left my house. Um, no answer, which I found was a little odd. And I told my husband at the time, I said, something's wrong. So I called my dad. And my dad said, well, I'll call the neighbor and we'll meet you over there. Okay. And they did. Now, Boulder City, I know that a lot of your viewers are from the UK, but... Um, Boulder City to Henderson is about a half hour drive. So I would be the last to arrive. And when I got there, um, obviously the coroner was already there. The police were there. Grandpa had died. And uh, obviously the police officers that had arrived were concerned for my health because I was very pregnant. It was July. It's hot. So they kind of escorted me out. Um, I did look in the window and the coroner had not taken grandpa out yet. And I could see grandpa had bloat, you know, cause he had been dead for a couple of days in the heat and it wasn't very pretty. Um, and I was close to my grandfather. He was always there for me. He was like my, my pal, my best friend. And, um, we had the funeral a couple of days later. Um, you know, as you do, you, you go on, right. Well, my cousins had all come on, come come out to Boulder City from Salt Lake City, Utah. And we were cleaning up the house and, you know, taking care of his personal effects, as you do. And my cousin Carl, who's about six years older than I am, and I'm the oldest of my dad's family, um, we were sitting on at the couch, um, which is facing a big window. And Grandpa always sat in his recliner chair always facing the TV. I mean, that was like his chair and his thing. And grandpa was a heavy smoker. Now, grandpa did not die of emphysema or cancer or anything like that. He died of old age. I mean, he just died in sleep sitting in the chair. Very peaceful. And Carl and I were sitting there packaging up some mementos of grandpa's and just, you know, talking, doing cousin things, right? And he leans over to me and he goes like this, Donald Wayne, look. I go, what? And he goes, look over at grandpa's chair, really quiet. And from grandpa's chair, we see ringlets of smoke coming up out of it. And it starts to rock. 30 seconds, maybe 20, 30 seconds at the most. And we just look at it and we're quiet. We, we're not scared. We know it's grandpa and we know that we're protected and we know that there's nothing wrong with it. And we just look at each other and just as quick as it happened, it ended. That, and we looked at each other and we said, so grandpa's here. That's amazing. So it's like him saying he's watching over you all. And, you know, maybe, was it the only time it happened or was there anything else with him? No, that was the only time. That was the only time. Um, Grandpa's buried in Boulder City Vet Cemetery because he was a vet in World War I. Um, yeah, it's the only time. I've And I when I go back to visit him in Grandma's grave, it's always cooler. I mean, remember in July, it's hot. And when they had their, their uh, Grandpa's funeral, there was a 20 degree drop that day. Wow. 
I don't know what it was, but it was like 100 degrees instead of like 115 that day. I mean, it's still hot, but, you know, it's still a drop in temperature. And even when I go back to Vegas and I visit my friends and family that still live there, I make it a point to go over to the cemetery and there's still like a cool wind that comes over that grave site. Like it's just people. That's amazing. That really is. Obviously, it's horrible that he's passed away, but the way he got to say goodbye to you, doing what he loves best, and you know, you can tell he's still watching over you, it seems. Oh, yeah, he is. And I know to this day that when I'm feeling, and same with my dad, I, I still have, uh, um, my dad died of uh, cancer, and he died about 15 years ago now. And I still feel his presence when I am stressed about something. And it's not like a like the smoke and the chair and the chair rocking. It's not like any of that presence, but it's more like a comfort when I talk about my dad and like things that we would do. I just feel the comfort of having his presence. It's more of a, I don't know. It's like when I'm watching um, football. I always feel like dad's there. Was he a football fan? Yeah. United. Oh, we can't win them all, can we? <laughs> <laughs> he, also liked, he also liked the uh, Minnesota Vikings, American football, and he liked the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> and his teams, good shout out for them teams. So yes. you said you had other stories. Now, I don't know any of these. Apparently, these could be from friends or family. So would, how many have you got? I've got... Well, I've got another one that happened, not to me per se, but when I lived in Phoenix, there was a pub there called the Georgian Dragon. Oh, my God, I love and that. I know, right? It's a proper English pub. Shouts out to my friends and my friend David who owns it. Um, but the waitresses and the um, people that work there have often said that that pub is haunted. And uh, it's always after closing. So. I've made it to closing <laughs> to last call. Ah, that was you still awake? <laughs> What's that? Was you still awake though by the end of closing? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there was days where I could make it and then, you know, COVID. Yeah. But oh. when I lived in Phoenix, yeah, there's plenty of times where I made last call, but I never witnessed any of it. But the girls that would work there and David would say, yeah, there's times where, um, many of the girls would not work there by themselves after closing. They would want someone else in the man, male persuasion to be in there because they were afraid of this ghost. So what things uh, did this ghost do? Well, there was uh, reported incidents where the ghost would appear from the men's side bathroom. So the pub is set up like the girl's bathroom is on this, on the left side and the men's bathroom is on the right side. Okay. Between the two is the bar itself, where okay. all the beer, right? And then behind the bar is the kitchen. And then you have the appropriate, you know, the restaurant part and the kind of like um, Witherspoons type thing, oh, right? Well, so no, if it was like Witherspoons, the um, toilets would be six miles up in the sky. Well, yeah, that's true too because of the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> the stairs that, that makes perfect sense when you're pissed. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what would happen is that they would hear things falling off the, the shelving, like pint glasses Ooh. and bottles of liquor or... I mean, that's a travesty all in its own. I mean, yeah. you don't want bottles of beer going flying off. I mean, that's just a waste. <laughs> but um, things would fall off the shelves. The door, the men's bathroom door would open and shut. Things would fall off the, um, like, um, fly off the walls, pictures and stuff. It's just weird things. That's um, still it's amazing. Did it physically touch anybody or anything like that? Well, they've always said that they felt the presence of somebody, you know, going through. But, but they felt a presence of a male, I'm guessing. Did they feel yeah. the presence of a nice, mischievous male or a moody type of person? Probably a moody type person. I mean, the place has 
it was never just a pub. It used to be like a, a pizza place at one time. It was a, um, it had several owners before David took it. So I don't know if it's like someone, I mean, we've had friends who have died that have always said that when they come back, they're going to haunt the place. But uh, <laughs> Well, there is no like, better place to haunt than a pub, is there? Well, yeah, that's my, that, when I come back, I am certainly going to haunt pubs. I mean, <laughs> I want to go to the Trafford pub too. That's going to be my first stop. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got my itinerary. <laughs> and then I have a friend of mine who, um, she lives right next door to a cemetery and a crematorium. God. And yeah, you know, there's, there's stories there. Because she has a man in the mirror that what? when it's winter time, yeah, when it's winter time in the, um, you know, when you take a hot shower and the yeah. steam comes, right? So when the steam hits this, her mirror just right, there's an apparition that appears from the steam. And it looks like a man who was a Civil War soldier. Wow. Now, area is chock full of history of Washington state is just full of history of um, the Indians, you know, the native Americans who fought in this area. And she is probably right on a hot spot for that area because she lives in Walla Walla and it's a hot spot of Indian or native American conflict and turmoil and, Lots and lots. I mean, there's a, actually a hill that's, I want to say it's called the Red Hill or something because it, what, there was a battle there and it was turned to red from all the blood that was spilled. So this man in the mirror looks like it was a Civil War soldier, kind of looks like with the hat, you know, the Civil War soldier uniforms. Okay. But then when there's different pictures of them, because she sent me the snaps, because she'll take a picture of it, and you can so see the picture. Hang on. She's got photos. Could yes. you send them to me, and I will share them on Twitter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I have them on my phone still. It's fantastic. Yeah. The man in the mirror is what we call him. She's named him probably, but... <laughs> you and just gave the name to the episode, man in the mirror. That's just perfect. Well, there you go. Well, we don't want to copyright Michael Jackson either. <laughs> oh, he's a ghost. It's kind of works now, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, there's that too. But um, yeah. And when you look at these pictures, because I kept telling her, well, don't anger him because, you know, some ghosts can get angry yeah. because the picture would change over a couple of weeks and months throughout the winter months. And it started getting, at one point, it looks like he was smoking a cigar and very happy and then toward the end it looked like he was getting angry and i told my friend i said stop taking the pictures because it looks like he was getting angry that you were taking so many photographs yeah he did and he stopped looking angry was that the only place he was doing it in the bathroom or was there anything else he did no it's only in the bathroom with the mirror what did you say mirrors are portals, I should say, for um, spirits? I've heard that one quite a few times. So that could be um, a way of trying to look through to see what's still going on in modern days. And if he's looking through now and he, he decides to listen to this podcast, <laughs> he must think, what a mess we've made of our countries right now. Well, yeah, right? Because they didn't fight for all this they didn't fight and die for us to be so divided again. I don't think that's what the purpose. Yeah. Um, there was a hotel that I visited in Arizona. We have and another story here, people. Hang on. So we're now moving to your full story. We're going to make this your final story. If you have any more, though. No, this is my last one. Oh, thank God. This, this <laughs> I don't mean thank God in a bad way, everyone. Me and Donna know each other, but I know Donna's going to get away on holidays, so I don't want to take too much of her time. Yeah, I'm going to Mount St. Helens, everybody. Woo! <laughs> um, the blast zone. Um, so the, my last story was when I went to Jerome, Arizona, which is a ghost town. Go figure. Um, there is a hotel there called the Jerome Grand. And it was actually used to be a hospital that was built in 1927. Now, hospitals, you know, have 
deaths. deaths. Yeah. But in 1996, they opened it up as a hotel. And on the third floor, you can actually see in room 32, Ooh. a cat jumped out of bed. I pause, a what bed? A, a dead cat. Oh, a, a spir spiritual cat is jumping on the bed. Oh, yeah. It, cat. It, it, I mean, people go to room 32 just to see the cat. It's the craziest thing. Yeah, so I checked into room 32. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know about it beforehand or was it a complete shock? Yeah, it's, it's been on uh, Ghost Stories on oh. channel AMC or wherever it is. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a well-known. What's that, Phil? Did you actually see it? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a story about the caretaker who hung himself or killed himself down in the boiler room yeah. um, for whatever reason. You know, people do suicide. And um, he was... Um, and you can, the people say that you can hear, or no, it was a maintenance, well, there was the caretaker and the maintenance man, but the maintenance man had killed himself as well. He got crushed by the elevator. And people have reported that you, he is in the elevator riding up and down endlessly. Oh my God. I didn't see that one. I was hoping I would see that one. Well, I think you have to that go back then. I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to go back for us all. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll go back and I'll report in, okay? Yeah. But I do belong to a paranormal uh, group here in the Tri-Cities in Washington. Would you like to give them a shout out if they're still around? Yeah, they're still around. We still, but we haven't met because of COVID. But yeah, um, it's the Tri-Cities Paranormal Group. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll meet up again someday. But we, we have the um, Kennewick man that we, uh, who was, whose remains were found. Um, he's the oldest... Um, skeletal remains like like prehistoric type thing yeah i get it. a very long time ago yeah like you know my age <laughs> <laughs> or the like the last time man united won the premier league title a very long time ago stop it stop it <laughs> stop it, <laughs> stop it. <laughs> that isn't this show <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very true so as we've got to the point the end of your stories We've got to the point now that, um, as we said, Donna is champion on Ramp Football. And obviously people, as you know, Ramp Football, it's a YouTube show where Premier League soccer for the Americans, but Premier League football, really. Um, it, we have whoever wins it, basically, Donna won last season. So what she's done for the start of the new season, she's chose 10 games for the first two weeks of the season. We predict the scores and we're going to have a continuous table throughout the season to see who wins. But to say, go Saints Beyond, get on that on the Epic Shows. You'll be able to figure it out on the long run if you want to watch it. Um, it's also on Twitter at RantFootball1, I believe. But while we're talking about Twitter, Donna, what is your Twitter handle? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me this. Donald and Cameron. That's correct. <laughs> it should have come across the screen as well if you're watching on YouTube. Um, yeah, if, you're, if you want to follow <laughs> her, follow. It, it will be in show notes as well. Um, Donna, I'd like to thank you so much for some absolutely fantastic stories there. And if anything else happens or you find more stories from friends and family members, I will definitely have you back on. So thank you very much. You're welcome, Phil. Thanks for having me on. Okay, everybody. Well, that's the end of the show. See you again in a month and stay spooky, I guess. I'll probably stole that from another show. Sorry. <laughs> Bye, Donna. Bye, Phil. Thank you for watching or listening to another great episode of Ghost, Aliens and Beyond. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at GAAB Podcast. If you have any supernatural stories you'd like to share yourself, email us on ghost, aliens, and beyond at gmail.com. And remember, grab the popcorn, turn the lights off, and prepare.